Welcome back to the series. I'm Stevie O and this is Mystical Lady Productions and we are reproducing Kate and Cashmere's The Sweetest Goodbye. Today, piano tracks, sequencing and tracking piano. <laughs> Just a quick shout out to my friends that produce like a pro, Warren Hewitt and the staff especially. Thanks again for allowing me to do this video series for one of your songs in your catalog by Kate and Cashmere. Listening to the beginning of the song here. Broken me and down, drowning in your tears, keeps on pouring down the fire and your heart's burned out. I'd, like to, I'd like to give it a little more emotion, a little more feel thinking of having some alternating chords in there. And instead of just on the downbeat, giving it a little more like a... Giving some alteration in the chords themselves too, you know. And then as the song gets into the second part of the verse, you know, coming down a whole octave. As it builds into the first chorus, I want to have a little more heavier hand on the on the left hand of the piano. Just along those lines. And then as the song builds later in the song, having some kind of And then uh, accompanying, having maybe a violin or some kind of synth sounding violin accompanying that as well. Kind of going through some different sections of the song here now. Still processing it, you know, still uh, coming up with ideas. But as of now, that's, that's kind of what I got going through my head. We'll see as it goes along as I start getting into recording it, uh, if I might make some adjustments or changes. And Hey, this is Stevie O. If you are enjoying this content, if you're into this kind of thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all that jazz. Would really appreciate the love. We'll see you in the next video. Now, something I like to do, particularly with piano, sometimes strings, I like to record one part of the piano at a time. What I mean by that is playing everything off my left hand first, the lower the bass notes, and then coming back and doing the chords. And then, like in this song, I've got that little overdub thing I'm thinking about on the high end. So I'll do them in three totally different takes. Left hand, right hand, overdubs. I'll show you what I mean. Now this is yet another thing, an advantage I love about using the MC300, okay, with the sequencer. I've got four tracks to choose from. Right now, I've got all my drums on one, and I've got my first piano part on track two. That's my left hand. Now what I'll be able to do is go on to track three and record the right hand into track four and do that overdub at the end. And then what's really cool is once it's on the sequencer, I have independent control of editing. So if I made any kind of mistakes, if I hit a bad note on my left hand, I can go in there and I can fix it. Or if I held a note too long, you know, on my right hand, it, or if there was a double note, you know, sometimes you're playing piano, you hit two notes at the same time. I can go in, I can find that one note and get rid of it. I can fix it. Okay. And then when the three tracks are to, to my satisfaction, I'll blend them all. You can merge these tracks all into one track and then assign the note from that to the Integra 7 piano.
part. So now the sequencer is playing the notes instead of me playing the notes. My idea for the end was something like this. Etc. That kind of idea. So I'm going to practice it, I'm going to work on it, and, uh, and then add it to the track. Remember, this is just sequence now. I haven't actually gone to the DAW with the piano track. Listening for errors, mistakes, things I might edit or want to change before I go to tape. Okay, now something I wanted to come back to, I failed to explain this a little better in my part two when I was doing the drums and sequencing. I'm going to be going from the sequencer now with the piano parts to the DAW, okay, the DAW, the Digital Audio Workstation. And what I've got here is all my drums on track one, and all my piano is merged on the track two. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable track one. So that only track two, all the piano parts are coming out of the sequencer and heading for the sound module. Now let me show you how I got this routed. I hit play. I've got to go in MIDI chord out the back. I'm going into the sound module, okay? In the back is where the MIDI right there is going in. As you can see it's triggering this patch called My Piano. Now I can change that Now it's playing the drums. <laughs> So you can see what I'm saying. Now from here, I'm going out the back. These output jacks here, okay? That's a left and right output. Now instead of running it to the board, which I would do if I was doing live, instead I'm running those jacks straight into the interface here. And as you can see, they're getting input signal right here. Nice strong signal. You don't want these cranked up too loud, you'll, you'll distort, okay? So you want those levels nice. From there, it's going to the computer interface, or the DAW. It's recording now. These are my levels here, and this is the actual audio being recorded in real live time. This is my mixing board. I'm going to start playing the track. On the drums. All these red parts are the drums. Look at them all. Here's all those, here's all those kick sounds I was telling you about, okay? And I'm circling here. Studio kick, if I turn it up. Those snare sounds I was telling you about. Here's the white noise I was telling you about. I crank it up here. Here's the Simmons kick. Okay, now I've got them uh, pan left and right and I got a rough little static mix going on here. These yellow bars are gonna be my bass. The blue is gonna be my electric guitars. I got some synthesizers. And here in the green are my keyboards. Here's the piano, here's the one I just recorded. I'll, I'll show you, I'll turn it down for you. Okay. Crank it back up. Pan it from left to right. Pan it left. Over to the right. 
pretty freaking cool, isn't it? So hopefully that gives you a little better uh, idea of how the sequencer is playing the role and then getting recorded to the old DAW. By the way, I use Cakewalk by Band Labs. That's my DAW of choice. I've been using Cakewalk for a couple decades now. So signing off for now, I'm Stevie O, Mystical Lady Productions. We will be back with part four, doing some strings and some synths and going to make these pianos sound a little more uh, alive with some backing accompaniment. Hopefully we'll see you in that video and uh, have yourself a great week and see you next time. Mm -hmm.